Get ready for some very trendy jewelry made from unexpected materials today on Hands On. Hands-on is made possible by Elmer's Products, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmer's.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Makeitfuncrafts.com The easiest way to update your style and show off your crafting is to wear your own creations. Hi, I'm Candy Cooper and today we're making all different types of trendy jewelry. Beginning with a bottle cap necklace, then a denim cuff bracelet from an old jeans. Next, it's a bendy clay heart bracelet. And finally, get out the glitter for a beautiful heart necklace. So take a look at this bottle cap necklace. You can see that one side is already filled, but we're going to decorate the back side with paper and paint pens. Let's take a look at the materials we'll need to make this necklace. You'll need some silky necklaces in whatever color you want, bottle cap charms, you can also put your charm on a stretchy bracelet, paper, scissors, a one inch hole punch, some embellishments like stickers or flat back stars, O beads, paint pens, blue gel glue, white school glue, and some paint brushes. Let's get started. So I've got my bottle cap charm here, and I've gone ahead and cut out some pieces of paper from magazine, but I'll show you. You just slide the hole punch in, and then you just punch out. Oops, this one kind of stuck. This is where our scissors come in handy. And then you just punch out your circle, and we're ready to go. The next thing you're gonna need is a little bit of school glue and you're just going to put a dot of glue in the center of your bottle cap and then use a paintbrush to spread it around. And you want to get a nice even coat and then you can pick up your image and put it on the bottle cap and you just want to make sure that the loop for your charm is at the top so if you have a picture it's not going to be upside down. And then you're going to need another drop of glue and you can paint this around on top of the image. And you're gonna seal it all up and even a little bit on the edges so it's nice and protected. And then you're just gonna leave that to dry. And I've got one here that's ready to go. And your next step is to actually decorate it. And I brought along some stars and I've got some initial stickers. It's what, really whatever you want here. And we're gonna just use some of the clear glue to apply some of these embellishments. And what happens with the clear glue is it makes the paper now nice and shiny. I'm gonna use a different brush to spread this around so our clear glue doesn't get cloudy. So just put a nice even covering on this and then you can put stickers on top. And even though they're stickers, the glue helps really make sure they're secure. And you want to push that into place and then I'm going to add some more glue to the top. And now we can put a little star in the center of our star. And then you're just going to leave that to dry. Okay, next we're going to add a little bit of color around the border of our bottle cap with these paint pens. The one thing you want to make sure you do is shake this um, really well before you use it so all the paint inside is mixed up. So I'm giving it a little shake and now you can just start putting a neat little border in whatever color you want down in the little ridges of the bottle cap. You can even decorate the paper side and make you know polka dots or 
stripes or draw on it if you want. So you're just going to keep going around and filling this in and then you're going to want to leave this to dry for about an hour. And I love how this has a nice glossy finish, especially on this metal. It looks really good. Okay, we're almost there. But you want to leave this to dry for about an hour. There, I'm all done. And I have a neat little orange border now. And you can see on this one here, I've got, I did it in two different colors, alternating between green and yellow. So now we're ready to put it all together. And I've got a little dish of O beads here, and you can put as many or as few on as you want. I want a contrasting color to my aqua cord here, so I'm going to put another red one on. And you want to string these on the end that is um, tapered. And you'll just slide them on like so. And then you kind of have to pull and then just kind of slide it down the end. And you can scoot them really close to each other or you can leave them spread out. And these even come, um, well, they come in every different color, which is pretty great. So you can make your own design however you want. The one I brought along with me, I put almost, I think there's probably a hundred on there. And so now I'm ready. I'm just going to slide my bottle cap charm on. And the neat thing about this is it doesn't matter which side you put on for the front because it's reversible, right? So I can go either way. And now I'm going to finish it up with a few more silky O beads. And I need to keep with my, my pattern, so I need another white one. And you can, you can see the design on the back. Let me flip this over again. This, the bottle caps come like this, so you don't have to do anything to that side. And they come in all different patterns. Like I've got some ladybugs and peace signs. So let's take a look at the finished project. And you can see on this one, I've used different sizes. So I've got some really thick, chunky O beads and then some tiny ones against it. And that looks fun here with my little astronaut charm. And that's the bottle cap necklace. Get out a pair of jeans that don't fit and get ready to cut them up for a cute cuff bracelet. Let's take a look at the materials. So you'll need your old denim that doesn't fit anymore, some buttons in round and flower shapes, a needle and some white embroidery floss, a craft knife, scissors, paint pens, some tacky glue, and an empty pop bottle. Okay, to get started, you're gonna slice your pop bottle. And you, see, you can see it's already been washed and the label's been removed. And let's see, I've got a little spot where I've already started right here. You'll definitely want some help from your mom or your dad here because this is a really sharp knife and you wanna be extra careful. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slice in a little bit more to the pop bottle. And now you can switch over to your scissors and just stick them in and then now you're ready to cut a ring. And I'm just going to keep cutting until I make a complete circle. And then now you're going to do the same thing about an inch from your last cut. So go ahead and you'll just put an incision in that and cut and I've got some ready right here. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is actually cover it with a piece of denim. And I've gone ahead and cut a piece so that it wraps all the way around the diameter of the bracelet and then it overlaps about an inch. So you're going to pull your tacky glue here, and it's good to get it started on a piece of paper towel before you start gluing, but you're going to make kind of just a little loopy ring of glue all the way around the bracelet. And for later, you can go to our website and get the full instructions for this project. So I've got a nice layer of glue, and now you're just going to wrap your bracelet in this piece of denim like so and then we'll need a little bit more glue for where it overlaps. Once you get this done you're going to let it dry a little bit and then you're going to put glue down into this inside area and fold your denim inward and repeat for the other side and I've got one here take a look at this and you can see how everything's all nice and wrapped 
up and glued. So this is our bracelet form. Now let's make some embellishments for this cute little bracelet. I've got some buttons here, but to make them a little bit extra special, you can color them with these paint pins. And don't forget, you need to shake these things up a little bit before you start using them. But you can decorate the edges. You can make little petal shapes, make some little lines, whatever you want. And then you can see some of these I've got here. I've made stripes and dots and colored on top of the flower shapes a little bit. You can do whatever you want here. And you can add as many colors as you want because this is your bracelet. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink on this purple flower. Some stripes, subtle, but when you have this on, it's gonna look really, really good. And they're so colorful. I love it. Okay, once you get all your color in place, then you're gonna set these aside and leave them to dry. And now it's time to add a little bit of fake stitching. So you're gonna cut a piece of embroidery floss and then did you know that embroidery floss is actually six tiny strands of string put together. And I'm gonna split this in half so that I have just three separate strings. You don't need that much either. Sometimes you wanna take a bunch of string before you, um, you know, cut a big long yard, but you don't need much. So about 12 or 15 inches. And then you're gonna thread your needle. I always have to lick the end of my thread and put it through the eye of the needle. Look, I got it almost on the first try. And then you're gonna double that over and I've got one ready here. You're gonna double this over and then make a knot at the end. And you're gonna string on one of your buttons. And then you're gonna put it back through the opposite side to make a fake stitch. And then you can tie it off in a knot. And this is really easy. And you can put these in all different layers too. You can put big flowers on top of, or underneath little flowers. Let's do another one here. So I'm making a knot at the end of the embroidery floss. And now I'm gonna string on a large button. Look, I have some really big ones in here. And you can string on a smaller flower and then put it through the other side of the hole and then tie it off so we have a really big button embellishment. The next thing you're gonna do is take some more of your craft glue and start gluing your button collage to the top of your bracelet. And you can do this however you, can, you want. You could do a row of buttons or you can make a neat little cluster like the ones that I brought, brought along today. Let's add some flowers here next. And you don't have to do the um, fake stitching if you don't want to. You can make this however you want. I'm gonna put a little flower here. So that's a denim cuff bracelet. Not only is this a great bracelet, but it actually bends, making it really easy to get on and off. Here are some of the other designs. We've got a flower, hearts, and kind of a multicolor effect, and some dots. Here's what you'll need. We've got some special clay that bends in all different colors. And then the other thing we have is a special mat. This mat has rubber on the back, so it's not gonna move on your work surface. So now the most important thing to start out with is you wanna condition your clay. Each of the little blocks of clay come in a two ounce block, and we're gonna be using one ounce, so we've cut it in half, and condition it. And all condition means is that you wanna warm it with your hands, and that'll make it nice and easy and pliable. At this point, too, you wanna to, um, have an adult uh, preheat your oven to 285 degrees, and you're gonna follow the instructions on the packaging. So I'm gonna lay this out on my work surface and kind of roll it into a log. And this is gonna be the base of our bracelet. Now one of the things I found, we've got a non-stick mat on it, but you also might wanna put another piece of paper on that just so it doesn't stick to your work surface. Then I'm gonna take my rolling pin and flatten it out. And I find it easier to start from the center and work out and then go from the other side and work to the other side. 
I'm going to continue to do that until I get a nice flat surface. Turn that over and again just roll it until I get a really good shape. Now I've chosen green for my bracelet today and I'm going to do the heart design. So I think that's about good. Now to do the hearts I've started out with some red and some blue and I've rolled out just two little kind of snakes here. And I'm going to squeeze this into by pushing it in and make a little bit of a teardrop shape. Flatten that top out. And you're just going to play with that a little bit. So I've got one. I'm going to take another little pinch. Again, flatten that top out. Bring that to an edge. And you're going to see by putting these two triangles together, it forms a heart. I'm going to put that on the center of my bracelet. Now you continue on adding dots or whatever else uh, you'd like on your design and then you're ready to bake. Okay, now let's add a, a center to our heart. I'm going to take a little dab of the blue. I rolled out just a little snake of the blue. I'm going to put that in the center. Now we could continue putting hearts all the way across, but I'm going to show you some of the other designs that we're going to work with on some of the other bracelets. So I'm going to draw, do another dot of blue and put it here and we're going to make a flower. And let's make an orange flower. So I'm going to take a piece of orange clay. Again, I'm going to roll it out. One of the things that I found when I'm working with clay is that if I roll out a um, kind of a snake and then slice it into dots, and I'm going to slice each piece, all of my dots are about the same size. So I'm just going to... And then they look a little bit more even when I make my flowers. So I'm going to take each one of these and roll it into a little circle just using it in my hand. Slide that down. Put another one here. And you always work in an odd number because then it makes the flower look more realistic. So that's three. And one more here. Oops, this one looks a little bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, it looks like I'm going to need six on this one to make it even. And that's okay. And then when if you press it down, you'll get your shape. And that's going to bake in. Now another design I want to show you is what the circle looks like. So I'm going to take another little piece. I'm going to flatten that out on my work surface. Lift that up. Lay that down and make a dot, and then let's take yellow. Another good tip is work with your lighter colors first and then move to your darker colors when you're really doing this at home, because that way you won't have any of the other color on your hand. I'm going to put a yellow one into the center. And then on this design, we do a crisscross through it. Kind of make a, a starburst through, and that's going to make those colors bend together. So for example, if this was my finished bracelet, the next step would be to lift this up off of my plastic, take a can, wrap that around, bring it over to the back. If there's any overlap, you can squeeze that in or pinch off that extra. And then you're going to put it in the oven and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions. And make sure you have adult supervision for that step. Then when you take it out, you're going to have a bracelet that looks like this. And you can see it bends. So let's take a look at all of the designs and see what we've made. So we have our heart design here with our hearts all the way around. If we move to the other side here on the yellow bracelet, we've done flowers all the way around. And you can see here, I didn't push those down too, too tight so that they stood up and were more three-dimensional. Then if we come all the way over here to this black bracelet, you can see when this one was baked, the colors kind of blended together, giving it a tie-dye effect. Then finally, on the white bracelet here, all I've done is taken the dots and layered them on top of each other in three different colors and let the clay kind of melt in as it baked. And that's how easy it is to make a bendy bracelet. You can never have too much glitter, especially on jewelry. Check out this glittery heart necklace. I love this orange with pink polka dots. I'm gonna have to make one for myself to match my shirt. Okay, so what you'll need to make this necklace is some stretchy necklaces, and I've got a few different kinds here. You can see you can get them in all different colors. The one I'm gonna use today actually feels really velvety and soft. Some lanyards in whatever color you want. Pony beads, also in whatever color you want. A hole punch, 
scissors, glitter in all different kinds of colors, some tape, blue gel glue, some tacky glue, and some freezer paper. So to get started, the first thing you're gonna do is cover just a plain old piece of cardboard in freezer paper. And what we're actually doing is making a nonstick piece of or work surface. And then I'm just gonna secure it with a couple pieces of tape. And we're good to go. You just want it so it doesn't slide around. I've got one ready to go right here. The next thing you need is a little heart pattern. And you can check our website um, for the pattern. But all you're gonna do is trace it onto your freezer paper. And I'm actually using a paint pen. I've already shook it up. And you're just gonna trace around your heart pattern. But you could do these in whatever shape that you want. Okay, so leave that to dry. And then also, you might wanna make some little squares and I'll show you what we're gonna use those for later. The next thing you're gonna do is fill your shape. Let me move my pattern out of the way. You're gonna fill your shape with this blue gel glue and you want it to kind of be a nice even coating. I'll go around the border here first. Don't worry if you get outside the lines a little bit. It'll still look really, really good. And make sure there's no areas of freezer paper showing. That looks good. And you can do you can do your square also here. At home you would want to make sure you let your black paint pen dry so you have a nice permanent square because you can reuse these later. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is fill your area of glue with glitter. And just let all of the glitter sink in to the glue. Don't worry about getting outside the lines either because you'll see in a second when you peel off your, your piece it's going to just have a nice clean border. So I've got one that I've gotten ready here and see you can reuse these areas. Okay so you end up with something like this. Let me put this over here and now it's time to start assembling our necklace. So the next thing you're going to do is hole punch your hearts. And believe it or not, this is almost just like paper, except it's more um, bendable. So you can just hole punch, and this is how we're going to actually hang them on our necklace. You may want to also make some plain dots for making a polka dotted heart too, and you do that with your hole punch as well. I'm sure I've got all kinds of paper pieces in here from my other craft projects. Yep, I sure do. And so you can pull out your glitter ones here, like so. And now you're gonna use some tacky glue to stick these things together. So let's make one of those cute polka dotted hearts. And I'm just gonna make a little pattern around the border here. And pick up my red dots and just start putting them into place. Doesn't that look sweet? You could wear this on Valentine's Day or any day, really. And here's the last one. Okay, so I'm gonna just set that aside and leave it to dry. The other thing you can do is cut smaller heart shapes out of these pieces of glitter um, sheet that we made earlier. And you can either draw your heart shape on the back or what I like to do is just fold this over and show you a little trick. Fold your piece of glitter in half and then you can cut a half a heart shape here and then when you open it up you have a full heart. How about that? So I'm going to go ahead and put that on this other heart shape and since I have an extra purple dot from when I hole punched this heart I'm going to add it in the middle of this little heart. To finish it off. Now to string these, make sure you close up your glue so it doesn't dry out. To string these we're going to use these lanyards and these are kind of tricky to open up at first because they're a little bit stiff so you may need an adult to help you. I've got one open here but to open them you're just going to push down and slide that little piece out of the way 
but then you also need to kind of pry it open a little bit. So now we can string them. So go ahead and you can put these either way. I like to leave the opening, the smaller part of the loop at the top, but you could put it however you want. You just want to make sure that when you close it, the closure is on the back side of the heart so you can't see it when you're wearing it. Okay, so I've got it closed up. Let me do a couple more here. Got my blue one opened up here. And you can make these in any pattern you want. Mine are kind of random. I'm going to put my bright blue at the, in the middle. And so the next thing we're going to do is just string these all together. And I've got one started here. And what you want to do is just slide it on using that smaller end of the loop. And then finish it up with three more beads. You can put as many of your hearts on like I did with this one here. Thanks for watching today. See you again next time when Hands On makes things for year round parties. Hope you can join us. Projects and ideas from today's show, plus hundreds of other kids' craft projects for every occasion, season, and even school subject, are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1404. A DVD set of all 13 episodes of Hands On Crafts for Kids, Crafting Every Day, Series 1400, is available for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. Visit craftsforkids.com to order. Make crafting a part of every day with Hands On. Hands On is made possible by Elmer's Products, manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business. Elmers.com Floracraft Floracraft Foam. Make it fun. Makeitfuncrafts.com